Tunue mikono Bwana tukikutukuza maana wewe ndio wastahili. Ukiwa kwenye kiti chako cha enzi Yehova tunainama. Tunainuka maana God we acknowledge that wewe ndiwe mfalme wetu. Hatuna Mungu mwingine tukatakaye abudu. Hakuna mwingine tutakaye pea sadaka za sifa ya Yehova. Zote ni zako Mungu. Uchukue utukufu, uchukue heshima, uchukue adhama, uchukue zote Bwana. Maana zote ni zako. Unastahili milele. Na katika jina la Yesu tumesifu. Amen. Shangwe na migelegele kwa Yesu.
katika utakatifu Wenye kuogo kwa katika sifa Ulie, ulie muna kwa upendo wako Bahari na muliki shadui Wakazama, wakazama kamari sasi Rizma zidani na majima kwa uinuliwe each one of you to this service this morning. Thank you for joining us and most of those who are on our social media, joining us on Facebook and YouTube. We want to say welcome in Jesus' name. I want those who are in the congregation to put your hands together. Let's receive our viewers with a hand. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you for joining us this morning. Amen. Appreciate yourself also for coming. Thank you so much. Amen. I want us to pray for our nation. Amen. I want us to get a microphone. Let me ask that Wangombe comes and pray for our nation. Let's pray together. We love our land. We love our nation. We love the destiny of Kenya. This is our motherland. Nasema hii ndiyo inchi ya baba zetu na mama yetu na hapa ndiyo nyumbani. Praise the name of Jesus. 
na tunakataa katika taifa letu any weapon any strategy any assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus if Kenya is destroyed the destiny of our children is destroyed so let's join together and make a prayer for the nation in Jesus name tuamini na tuombe our Father and our God, we come before your blessings this morning in the name of Jesus. We make a declaration that our nation Kenya has a destiny in the name of Jesus. How we declare and declare in the name of Jesus that there is no arrow that shall be set against our nation shall prosper in the name of Jesus. We declare and declare, my Father, my God, that you shall move with us as a nation of Kenya. We speak, my Father, King of all glory, the word of destiny in the name of Jesus. We declare and declare in the name of Jesus that there is no allow whatsoever that shall set against our nation. We declare that our economy shall be safe in the name of Jesus. We declare that the peace of our nation shall be safe in the name of Jesus. We declare that whatever my Father, Lord, that he shall do, my Father, we shall do it, my Father, King of all glory, by the enjoyment of the peace of our nation in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, Lord, for our leader, my Father, King of all glory, President William Luto. We declare in the name of Jesus that my Lord, the wisdom that comes from you, my Father, shall prevail, my Father, Lord, in his life in the name of Jesus. And all the cabinets and all people that he work with, my Father, Lord, we declare and declare, my Father, because we know, my Lord, according to your word, that our nation shall be saved under the knees in the name of Jesus. And now we take the position as a church and declare and declare that my Father, our nation shall be saved in the name of Jesus. We declare that all shall be well, my Father. Even the plan that is there tomorrow, Monday, my Father, my God, we declare it shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. If it have set my Father, King of all glory, to destroy our nation, it shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. But if it is to save the nation, my Father, you are the one to save the nation, my Father. It is not the plan of men, my Father. As you say in your word, my Father, King of all glory, that we commit everything to you, my Father, and you shall set our ways. My Father, my God, God, set the way of our nation in the name of Jesus. Set our planning in the name of Jesus. My Father, we declare and declare that you shall be with us in all things. We declare that all shall be well in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Do we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate God for our nation. In Jesus' name. We are asking our children to stand all the way together with our preteens please stand and this morning let me get one of the preteens to pray for us one who is okay come 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 and let's have you pray even as we allow you to go for your class amen you can come closer here in jesus name let's bow our heads for our word of prayer father lord we say thank you for the gift of life that had given unto us Father Lord, as we are going to start our day, guide us and bless us, Father Lord. As we are going to be taught by our teachers, Father Lord, help us to understand everything. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. The Lord bless you. May you understand everything. Everything. In Jesus' name, I bless you. You go to your class. All those, even those who are seated on the other side, you are free to go to your class. I appreciate uh, our young people as they go to their classes. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Berenina Endelea Maombi you E buona unipa Bere buona Nina endelea Nina zidi 
Wana kutembea Mambiu Uyasikie Ebwana Unipa Ebwana Wana kwa imani Yesu Nipande Nilima Ebwana Unipa Ebwana Unibaba Kwa imani Mimi Possessing the wells, redigging and repossessing the wells. So far, we have been able to see the benefits of redigging and repossessing the wells. We have seen that number one, when we redig and repossess the wells of our fathers, we establish a transgenerational legacy of faith. That whatever we start today will not only affect our lifetime. It is going to affect generation after generation that will come from us. The Bible says when a curse comes upon somebody, 
it goes into the third and the fourth generation. But the blessing of God affects up to a thousand generations. What we are doing today, the faith we are establishing today, will affect generations that will come after us. And some of these people, they might not know your name, they might not know the, 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 the color of your skin, but whatever you are doing today shall affect their lives. Praise the name of Jesus. And that is why we are redigging the wells. We are going back to ask ourselves, how did our fathers do it? What did our fathers believe in? What has kept them from generation to generation? Why do they still love God? As they enter their 80s, as they enter their 90s, what is this that has kept them that they are not discouraged? They have not given up. It is that faith that has kept them this far. The same faith is the anchor and the foundation of our faith. And the same faith will not only affect us, but generations after generations that will come from us. We saw that the well that Isaac dug or he dug, the well that was dug by Abraham, the same well benefited Isaac. It benefited Jacob. It benefited Joseph. And even in the New Testament, the same well benefited our Lord Jesus Christ. Your faith will not end with you. Generations will drink from the same well of faith that you are digging in this season. Somebody say amen. We redig and repossess the wells of our fathers because it positions you as the person God will use to fulfill his internal plan and purpose. We redig the wells and repossess them because it positions you as the person God will use to fulfill his internal plan and purpose. God has a plan for this generation. There is the purpose of God to be fulfilled. And God is looking for a man. He's looking for a woman. He's looking for the young and the old that he may use them to fulfill his plan and his purpose. And I have said in this place that you are not a passing crowd. You are not a passing crowd. You are not just like smoke that is being carried away by the wind. But you are on earth at such a time like this for God to use you for his own plan and his own purpose. Somebody say amen. Once again shout amen. I said benefit number three. It protects us from drifting away from the, from the worship of the true God. When we redig and repossess the wells of our fathers, we are being protected. It protects us from drifting away from the worship of the true God. I have said, and even it is in the scriptures, the Bible says, that in the last days false prophets will arise and they will deceive even those the Lord has elected. But I want to say today when we dig the wells of our fathers we shall not be drifted from the worship of the true God. No matter how many prophets arise no matter the power they move in our faith will help us to stand on the worship of the true God. Somebody say amen. They will come with the signs. They will come with the wonders. They will come with the philosophies of men. 
but we shall remain grounded in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Put your hands together and clap to Jesus. You shall not be drifted. You shall not be carried away by the lies. You shall not be moved by the miracles. You shall be grounded on the true faith. Can I hear a better man? On the true faith. Praise the name of Jesus. They will come in the name of the Lord. But you will not be moved. They will come in the name of signs, miracles and wonders. You shall not be moved. If our fathers have been able to stand all this time, we cannot be moved by the false messiahs of this generation. They can come in the name that they are the Jesus of this generation. But we know the Jesus we believe in was born in Bethlehem of Judah. He was not born in Bungoma. He was not born in Galisa. He was born in Bethlehem of Judah. And the same Jesus died and rose from the dead. No matter which power they come with, we have a faith that cannot be moved. Can you say amen? We have a faith that cannot be moved. We are anchored on the true faith. Praise the name of Jesus. Number four. Number four. Praise the name of Jesus. Benefit number four. Of redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. Is that we remain relevant. We remain relevant. Praise the name of Jesus. That we shall never become irrelevant. Praise the name of Jesus. And I, I, I took a, a broader perspective on this topic. I started showing you secrets of becoming and remaining relevant. Praise the name of Jesus. And the anchor scripture is in Psalms 92 from verses 12. Psalms 92 from verses 12. Where the Bible says, But the godly will flourish like palm trees. I pause there and say, Because you are a godly person, you shall never be barren. I repeat, Because you are a godly person, you shall never be barren. You have not heard it. I repeat it the last time. Because you are a godly person, you shall never be barren. The Bible says the godly will flourish like palm trees. Therefore, I declare over your spiritual life, may you flourish. I declare over your physical life, may you flourish. I declare over your career, may you flourish. I declare over your education, may you flourish. And grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. Every spirit assigned to make you weak, I arrest it by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall never be rendered weak. You shall remain strong. Hey, hey, hey. You shall remain strong. The spirit of discouragement sent against your life to make you a weakling. I arrest it in the name of Jesus. I declare no matter the amount of discouragement, the Lord shall keep you strong. Praise the name of Jesus. And not just strong, but strong like the cedar. The cedars of Lebanon. Not the cedars of Nyandarwa. Because we don't know how the cedars of Nyandarwa are. We don't know how the cedars of Kisi are. But the Bible refers to the cedars of Lebanon. Therefore we access Lebanon in the spirit. And claim the strength of the cedars of Lebanon upon our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the strength of those cedars that is mentioned in the Bible be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Verses 13, the Bible says, 
For they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. I said here, you need to understand and to know where your victory comes from. Your victory does not come from the economy of Kenya. Your victory does not come from the certificate you have. Your victory does not come from the weather condition. Hey, hey, hey. Your victory comes from where you are planted. The Bible says that those who trust in the Lord are like a tree that is planted beside the streams of waters. And that tree bears fruit in all seasons. It bears fruit not in one season, but in all seasons. I declare whether it is January or it is July, may the Lord cause you to bear fruit because you are not planted in a month. You are planted in the house of God. Do you hear me? We are planted not in the date of the month. Listen to me. It is not our, our productivity does not depend on the day of the month. When you are transplanted in the house of God, it doesn't matter whether it is end month or middle month or the... Praise the name of Jesus. Because you don't draw your existence from your salary or your employer. You draw your existence from God. I say you draw your existence from the living God. And our God does not know drought, does not know rain season, does not know economic recession. Our God releases life that is able to make you productive all the seasons of your life. I want to declare, may you be productive. Shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor, hear what the Lord is saying. There are people who have been tired by the days of the month. There are people who believe I can't make it in January. There are people who believe they can't make it in Kenya. The Bible says he will bless you in the city. He will bless you in the country. He will bless you when you are going out. He will bless you when you are coming in. What matters is where you are transplanted. Everybody who believes what I'm saying under this anointing, I declare you shall never be barren. You shall never be barren. Because you are not planted in your level of education. You are transplanted in the house of God. Please hear me. Hear me well. And understand when God is speaking. And learn to capture what the Lord is saying. Because in so doing, your life changes. Learn, learn, learn. Chifundishe. Chifundishe. To capture what the Lord says. Because in so doing, <laughs> the Bible says, so shall my word be. So shall my word be that proceeds out of my mouth. It will not return to me void. I declare may you receive an understanding where you are planted. You are not planted in the economy of Kenya. You are planted in the economy of heaven that has no recession, that does not lack the U.S. dollar. The economy of heaven is a universal economy that is productive in all seasons. You can see yourself in Nakuru. You can see yourself in Indege Farm. But you are planted in the house of God. Give me the scripture. The Bible says, They flourish 
in the courts of our God. Where do you flourish? Where do you flourish? <laughs> Therefore, you need to know where your victory comes from. Christians, we should know where our victory comes from. Where our breakthroughs come from. We need to know our breakthrough comes from the house of God. No wonder that revelation made David declare one day in your presence is better than a thousand anywhere else. It made him declare I could rather be a watchman in the house of the Lord than spend my days in the tents of the wicked. I want to be there where I shall flourish. Jesus, how I love you. You flourish here in the courts of our God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Verse 14. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. I said as a believer, God should never waste his resources on you for a single day. You must be productive all your days. If God gives you 90 days, there shall be 90 productive days. At 120, Moses climbed Mount Horeb. The Bible says he had no deformity. No, his ears, his eyes were dull. He could see clearly. He climbed to the top to see the promised land at 120 years. And Moses did not die a weakling. He died a strong man. He was still working to the last day. He went up the mountain to see the promised land and then God took him. There was no party or service. No pastor. God himself did the burial. The man was strong. I curse every disease that comes with old age. Can you say amen? amen. Shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor. No iguete. No raigua. I said, shake your neighbor. Do you hear what I'm saying? You know, there are people who believe as I grow old, the more diseases I carry. Yeah? I, start be, I start having problem with my joints, with my eyesight, with what? At 120, this man was he still strong? No, he was not the people. I declare every disease that comes with the age is not your portion. If you believe it, receive it. I say it again. If you believe it, receive it. If you are excited, receive more. You can't spend 15 years for medication. Before you die. It never happened to Moses. I declare it will not happen to you. You are going to get in a casirica. Niki sikia zire and gufu ziko and niango and in a kuangaria video and nipokea. Nina skia ni achi hap. Unanisikia? Iyo imani potofu. Kwa mba lazima ni goncheke ndiyo ni kufu. Moses haku wadimitiwa. Nasema Moses haku wadimitiwa. He was strong. Anapanda murima. At 120. No wonder the Bible says. Even to the old age, they shall bear fruit. They shall remain 
green and healthy. They shall re that word fito in other translation is healthy. They shall remain healthy and green. Amen. May the good health that comes from God be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. And today I take power and authority over every disease in your body. I command it in the name of Jesus to catch the fire of the Holy Spirit, melt away and be consumed in the name of Jesus. Every weakness, every weakness in your body that makes you vulnerable to cold weather, that makes you vulnerable to the changes of weather, I command your system to get the strength of God to survive every season of the year, to continue until old age. I release your healing now. I release the strength of God now. I destroy every sugar, diabetes in your body, every signs of cancer, every signs of pneumonia, every signs of malaria, every signs of a I command uh, all your joints to get the power in the name of Jesus. No anemia in your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Up to old age, they shall remain healthy and strong. Tell your neighbor, I'm not preparing to be sick. Tell your neighbor, even the insurance I have for medication. I have taken it because it is a requirement of the government. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know, when we buy diaries, we are asked, write your doctor. Have you seen those diaries? That require you indicate who is your doctor. Tell your neighbor I don't have a personal doctor. Jesus is my personal doctor. So from today, tell your neighbor from today, when you buy a diary and it re requires you to give a personal doctor, write Jesus. I will be picking your diaries at random. If I discover you have written something else, I pluck out that page and tear it in pieces. Your doctor is not in Kenyatta Avenue. He is not in a certain building in Nairobi. Your personal doctor is our Lord Jesus Christ. And he shall keep you healthy even to the old age. You shall be green and fito in Jesus' mighty name. Clap your hands to Jesus. Then we started looking at what kills relevancy. What is that which kills relevance? I said number one is premature arrival. Premature arrival. Arriving before your time. Listen, just because you are through with form four, you are not through with life. Just because you are through with the building your house, you are not through with life. Just because you have sung one song and we were blessed, we cried. There are more songs to be sung. There are more songs to be sung. Just because one someone blessed somebody does not mean that is enough. There is more land to conquer. There is more space ahead of you. You have not arrived. Paul says, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting that which is behind me and striving or pressing on to the mark of my high calling in Christ Jesus. Premature arrival will make you irrelevant. And I've seen people just because of one breakthrough, they got contented. Just because of one opening, 
they felt, wow, I've landed. We saw the story of the rich young man. When he had a good harvest, he said in his heart, now you can be settled. You eat and drink and make merry because you have so much in store for you for many days. What does the Bible say? God said to the fool, God said to the young rich man, you are a fool because today your life is needed here. Now tell us whose will this wealth be? Who are you going to leave it for? Because you are going home. Your soul will be taken. I said here, when you are alive before time, you are cutting short your days. Always tell your heart, there is something more I can do. There are more opportunities awaiting me. Always stretch yourself and tell your heart you can go for the land that is remaining. Praise the name of Jesus. Do not kill the desire to explore. Do not kill the desire to stretch. Do not kill the desire to pay the price to attain the greater results that God has for you. Number two, that's where I pick it today. People become irrelevant when they know it all, knowing it all. The easiest way to become irrelevant is when you think you know everything. Clap your hands to Jesus. I'm so, I'm so excited. To see you writing. When you know it all. Praise the name of Jesus. It is a killer. Of your relevance. Proverbs chapter number 12. And verses 15. Proverbs 12. Verses 15. What does the Bible say? The way of a fool. Is right. In his own eyes. Let me ask you. In whose eyes are the ways of a fool right? In his own eyes. In our own eyes. Everybody else can see you are wrong. But the spirit of foolishness will tell you you are right. Everybody else sees you are wrong. But because of the know it all. You tell yourself, I am right. I am headed in the right direction. But what does the Bible say? But he who hits counsel is what? Is wise. Amen. A fool is right in his own eyes. But he who hits counsel is wise. Proverbs 16, verse 25. Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seems right to a man. But it ends in the way of death. Praise the name of Jesus. You could be holding to a way that is right to you. But it is leading to destruction. May I declare that will not be your portion. You will not be headed in the wrong direction and refuse to heed to counsel. How to kuwa unaerekea muerekeo sio stahili na ukose kusikia ushauri. Praise the name of Jesus. How to jipereka kwa mauti just because you can't heed to counsel. Praise the name of Jesus. Listen to me. You quickly become irrelevant 
When you refuse to listen to counsel. I usually tell people we can finish formal education. We can say I have finished school. I have been to the university. I have graduated with a master's degree. I have my PhD. I am a professor. But in the school of learning, the school of life, there is no graduation. You can be through with the formal education. But the school of life has no end. You are not getting me. You are not getting me. I am saying in the school of life, you are a student to death. <laughs> a student for life. In other words, so long as you are on earth, there is a new thing to learn. There is a new thing you have not learned. And when you learn it, you will remain relevant. Have you met people in your life who know everything? When you bring this topic, they are masters. When you bring this one, you talk about animals, they will tell you how animals, how they know about animals. They will tell you about snakes. They will tell you about the politics. They will... They know everything. That is a clear sign that you are graduating into irrelevancy. When you know it all. I want to say today. There are things I don't know. And I'm willing to learn. Anytime. I get something new. I feel refreshed. <laughs> I feel encouraged. You come to my office. I buy books. Again and again. There are even books I bought I've never read. And I keep on buying. You come to my office. I have almost 10 translations of the Bible. 10. That is why you will hear me say, give me in the King James. Give me in the Amplified Version. <laughs> I, have, I have an application on my phone that has over 100 different translations of the Bible. I'm a student forever. There are times I visit people. Instead of being a blessing, they become a blessing by what I see. Just get into somebody's compound and you learn a new thing. Be a good listener. There are times you don't need even to talk. You know, there are, there are people you sit with and you are not supposed to talk. No matter what you know. Just listen. <laughs> because they will release such wisdom into your life that will make you relevant in life. We are like the kasuku. You are talking to a billionaire. He's trying to show you how to make billions. And you don't have even a bank account. And you are busy contributing. What are you saying? Your bank account was closed. In fact, it was declared <laughs> dormant. And here is a billionaire giving you secrets. And you are also talking. Shut up, you. <laughs> Amen. Listen. Listen. Learn to be quiet a minute. And hear. It will make you relevant. I, when, when I was in Kiserian and I was uh, with my host 
he was talking to me. And he shared with me information. You know, he has built a, a, a church that is three times ours. And he has been there for seven years. So, he was trying to tell me how he has done it. How he has done it. Are you hearing? How he has done it. And I was listening. And I don't want to tell you. <laughs> because I captured something. Oh, I said, I wish I had known this thing many years ago. Maybe we could be ten times better than what we are today. Huh? Amen. You know, it tells me, pastor, you keep money in the bank. The bank makes money with your money and you earn nothing. He told me every time I bank the church money in the account, I've decided to share with you the secret. I bank it in a fixed account with an agreement that I'm giving you 500,000. After three months, you give me 30% as an interest. I take the 30%, put it on my capital, and refix it again for three months. I agree with them. The church money can be needed any time. So I'm not fixing it for six months. It is three months. The interest is 25%. So if I fixed 500,000, after three months, I have from the church money, I have maybe 50,000, 100,000. No offering from the church, but I've made 200,000 in six months. Iyo ni kitu ya kusema. Hata mimi, ni nakuanga nakamati ya waze. Is that something you make a comment or you just keep quiet? You look how foolish you have been for 20 years. Huh? Is that something to speak? You keep quiet and ask yourself, where was I? Am I a Kenyan or I'm from Rwanda? When people are making money without an offering, yours is in the account. People are eating your money. I said, oh my God. But I discovered that is now becoming relevant. Before I, before I expire, I have gotten something that will keep me vibrant. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus that I can trade with money without going to the marketplace. Morai gwa shiana shiangai. Yeah? So, you become irrelevant when you refuse to listen to counsel. Proverbs chapter number 1 verse 8. My son, hear the instructions of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. My son, hear the instructions of your father. Young people who are here, please listen to your fathers. Your father might not be a graduate. But the lessons of life have deposited a lot of wisdom. And that wisdom can change your life. Wacha ni kuambie. Kuna vitu ni mepitia katika huduma. Miaka ishirini. Ukikuja unafungua kanisa wakona miaka mwaka moja. Nita kuambia vile hii miaka ishirini. Vile utasurvive. Sasa usikuja tukutane Ndiyo mefungua kanisa. Pare ndi mo kwa muto. Unajaribu kutafuta kaproti. Kakwanza. Nina kuongeresha. Na we uko busy. Kuniambia vire ambavyo unajua. Nyamanza. Sikiza huyu ni baba naongea. Ni baba naongea. The father is giving you instructions. I cannot... I cannot talk when Bishop George is talking. Anytime we meet, even in the market, 
and they start talking. I know he's talking out of 50 years experience in ministry. He is older in ministry than my ears. Amujarewa. Yani re miaka me ubiri ni nyingi kuliko ilo miaka niko nayo kiasiria. Ya kwamba mimi nikibadilishwa na Bukin alikuwa na ubiri. Sasa kianza kuongea ninasikiza huyo ni baba. Kuna vitu baba atakwambia msichana. Anakwambia hawa vijana mnatembea na wao. Mnachekeshana kwa barabara, kuachana na wao. Kuna kitu baba yako anajua haujui hujui kama hivyo ndio alikuwa anachekesha mama yako akamtoa fomu tu. Sasa nakwambia huko chekesho unachekeshwa. <laughs> Kama huko. Wachana na hii. There's something your father knows. Listen to instructions. And he says, do not forsake. Huh? I'm in that scripture again. And do not forsake the law of your mother. Are you hearing young people? When Moses is breastfeeding, when the mother is training Moses, he is telling Moses, Moses, know this, that lady is not your mother. I am your mother. I am your mother. Are you hearing Moses? And Moses, you need to know this. This is not our home. We belong to those categories of people. Those who are working on the bricks, those are our people. This is not our people. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says when Moses became of age, he refused to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh. Why? He knew the law of his mother. When you are working with your mother in the kitchen, listen to your mother. Listen to your mother. Keep that law in your heart. Do not say, mommy, you don't know how to use a cologne. You don't, you don't, you are not, you don't even have an account with TikTok. Mommy, do you know what Instagram is? Forget about that nonsense. There is a law of your mother that will keep you relevant. Even to date, my father will talk to me my mother will talk to me. Amen. I have discovered God can speak to you even through a child. He can speak to you through anybody. All that you need to have, listen to this, all that you need to have is a teachable spirit. And a discerning heart. That when somebody is speaking, do not only listen to the word, listen with other ears. Listen into the depth of what somebody is saying. Let me show you something. When David comes back to Siklak after destroying the Philistines and fighting them and getting the victory, he came back and found the city has been burned down. The wealth has been taken. I'm quoting First Samuel chapter number 30 from verse 11. Praise the name of Jesus. And when they had wept and wept to their satisfaction, the Bible says he inquired of the Lord, can I pursue God tells him, pursue and you recover all. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says he steps out. But as they are pursuing the Amarakites, the Bible says they found a young man from Egypt who had been left behind, praise the name of Jesus, by his master because he became sick. And they said we can't continue carrying this luggage. They left him behind. And then he was brought to David. And the Bible says. 
David said to him, to whom do you belong? And where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, a servant of an Amarakite. And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. Amen. Verse 14, please. We made an invasion of the southern area of the Jeratites in the territory which belongs to Judah and the southern area of Kareb and we burned Siklak with the fire. Who is talking? A slave. And David said to him, can you take me down to this troop? So he said, Swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master and I'll take you down to this trip. To this troop. Uh -huh. And when he had brought him down, there they were, spread out over all the land because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. Mm -hmm. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening in the next day. Not a man escaped. Except 400 young men who rode on camels and fred. Who delivered David? A slave boy. A slave. David was willing to listen. Let me ask you. If David was wise enough in his own wisdom and refused to listen. Could he have recovered? Could he have recovered if he said, I am a commander. I have fought battles. I know how to fight my enemies. And then he says, this is a slave. He's a useless boy. I will not listen to him. He could not have recovered anything. This is a slave boy who saved David because he was willing to listen. He did not know it all. He was not wise in his own eyes. It is a house girl who saved Naaman. Correct? A slave girl who saved Naaman. They brought in a slave, poured into the house. And this slave could see the struggles of the master. How he suffered with leprosy. And then he whispered to her mistress and said, back home we have a prophet. And if my master goes there, he will be healed. The word of our maid was captured by a commander of the army he reported the same to the king. And what does the Bible say? The king wrote a letter and sent his commander to go for treatment abroad. From the word of a slave girl. Can you hold your ear please? And I'm not disciplining you. I'm not a teacher. And say to your ears, my ears open up. You don't know everything. Praise the name of Jesus. Huh? There are people God will position in your life. Listen. They will be your teachers. They will be your advisors. They will give you divine counsel. And it is that counsel that will keep you relevant in this life. Amen. Our fathers in the faith keep talking about Alan Finicent. Alan Finicent told me this. Alan Finicent said this. An engineer told me we can put up this building. A uh, so and so told me we can get this land. Those people strategically positioned, they are there to sharpen your life for the next level that God is taking you. There is somebody who knows where the money you need can be gotten in the legal way. There are people who know how you can handle your marriage. They become your teachers. Hallelujah. 
There are people who are doing the same business that you are just about to start. They will give you advice. Praise the name of Jesus. They are a strategic people positioned to bring counsel into your life that keeps you relevant in the journey of life. There are people who have the same talent like yours. They will shape your talent and remain on the cutting edge. Do not be annoyed all as a believer. Open your heart to learn. Clap your hands to Jesus. Open your heart to learn. Refuse to remain with one skill that you learned in a village protechnic. All the days of your life, you will become irrelevant. Open your heart to the counsel of godly people that he brings you away. Before I close down, listen. This is God's counsel to you. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Then you shall make your ways prosperous. Be a student of the Bible. Say my Bible. I usually say here, and I don't know who hears me, but I pray that from today you will start hearing what I say. Buy yourself a Bible. Buy yourself a Bible. Get the counsel of God in your hands. If you drive a car, have a Bible in the car. Next to your bedroom, just next to your bed, have a Bible. When you buy a phone, the first application to download should not be TikTok. It should be the Bible. So that even now we have audio Bibles that you can open and sleep and the Bible is read to you as you listen. I have that application in my Bible and the other day it was reading and I got revelation. I came to the office the entire morning I was writing that revelation in the morning. I just got home and I opened the Bible. It was reading and I was listening and then captured the revelation. I came back to the office and I was just writing. I could not finish writing in the morning. Up to the afternoon. You just listen. And you get the counsel of God. You become wise. You are sharpened. You remain relevant in this life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. The spirit of irrelevance is not your portion. You shall not be declared irrelevant. You shall remain relevant all through your life. Because you are open to the wisdom and the counsel that God brings to you. When God says to you, whatever you are doing is not right. He's trying to bring some counsel to your life. Do not harden your heart. One of the worst state you can find yourself is a state where you resist. Listen. Where you resist the counsel of God. That God speaks to you from the altar and it shows you what you are supposed to do and you reject it. Wacha niongea kwa Kiswahili. Wale mko online na mjui Kiswahili, sikiria kidogo. Mahali atari kabisa unaweza kujipata kama mwanadamu. Ni mahali Mungu anakuonyesha makosa na unakataa kurekebisha. Mungu anasimama hapa anatuambia hii barabara mnachukua kama kanisa sio nzuri. Na wewe unajua hiyo ndiyo barabara unafuata. Unaambiwa na mchungaji 
tufanye hivi hii ndio njia ambayo itamleta Mungu kwa maisha yako na wewe umekataa in fact unafanya maandamano ya siri eh haubebi matawi lakini umekataa ushauri hiyo ndiyo hali kwa sababu Mungu anawachanaga na wewe pole pole Anasema si umechagua njia yako eh okay Waje nitafute yule atanisikia Na waje niseme kwa wakati mwingi kama wakristo tumejikuta tukipingana na ushauri wa Mungu Mungu anataka tuende hivi ndiyo tubaki tukiwa bora lakini tunakataa. Yaani unataka kukwama na kile uliamua kufanya. Whether God wants you to change it or not, you refuse. You stick to one, to that direction which you know God is repeatedly saying this is not right. This is not right. But you stick. You refuse to turn. Within a while you become irrelevant that is not your portion i'm saying that is not your portion may the lord give you a heart of humility may god give you an obedient heart may god give you a teachable spirit that you can receive knowledge you can receive counsel you can receive wisdom and you remain relevant in your life in Jesus mighty name let's stand and ask god to give us a teachable spirit to give us a heart that appreciates counsel that receives counsel into our lives in the name of jesus christ oh yes stand on your feet and tell god today i refuse to be a know it all i refuse to be a know it all i present myself as a student in your school teach me your ways teach me your counsel order my steps lead me in the way that is right before your eyes in the mighty name of jesus let's open up our mouth let us make a prayer in the mighty name of jesus pray for a teachable spirit for a receptive heart a receptive heart a receptive heart a receptive heart a teachable spirit you are opening your mouth. You are praying for yourself. Tell God I'm your student. I am your student. I am a student of the Holy Spirit. Teach me, Lord. 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 Give me today a teachable spirit. 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 I reject from my heart.
Usiniache, usiniache Nika kupoteze umuimu Nifundishe Teach me Lord Teach me Lord Teach me Lord Teach me Lord Akata manaba Teach me Lord Riba shata manaba Teach me Lord Raka manaba Raka manaba Shata manaba Raka manaba Teach, 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 teach Raka manaba I invest in my heart I am willing to learn I am willing to learn I am willing to learn I'm willing to shaka tarabalaba, shaka tarabalaba, shaka tarabalaba, rika bayanda, shaka tarabalaba. Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. Now call, call into your life, teachers. Ask God to give you teachers in every stage of your life. In every level of your life, in every level, call for the teachers in your marriage, call for the teachers in your career, in your business, in your calling, in your ministry. Call God to send counselors, to send advisors, to send teachers. Tell God, position men who will give me counsel, position men who will teach me your ways. Position men who will sharpen my skills. Shaka talabalaba, 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 shaka talabalaba, shaka talabalaba. Teachers of God, in the path I'm taking up, in this level, give me teachers, give me teachers, give me teachers, give me counselors. I refuse to be a fool. Give me counselors. Bring fathers and mothers on my way. Bring fathers, bring me fathers, give me fathers, give me teachers, give me mothers. Oh my Kabayana, hey Kabayana, I refuse to be stagnant in every level, in every level, give me fathers, in every level, give me teachers, in every level. Shakatara Balama, Shakatara Balama, Shakatara Balama, Shakatara Balama, Shakatara Balama. Give me teachers, Lord. In every stage of my life, my God, every level, Maraba Satan, Rekabo Sibila, I refuse to make mistakes. I refuse to make mistakes. I refuse to miss you. Oh, God, bring the my way. Bring them my way. Jesus. Teach me, Lord. Tell God to give you the appetite for the scriptures. Tell God to open up my heart for the godly counsel. The godly counsel that you bring on this altar. Every godly counsel that you bring my way. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Help me not to resist. Help me not to resist. Help me not to resist. The godly counsel. The godly counsel. The advice from your own. Help me not to resist. The godly counsel. Who shall only walk you? Who be the one who will be? Who be the one who will be the one who will be? Who be the one who will be the one who will be? Who be the one who will be the one who will be? Who be the one who will be the one who will be? Who be the one who will be the one who will be? When you give me spiritual counsel, spiritual guidance, Father, help me. Father, help me to accept every counsel. I enroll myself in the school of the world. Give me an appetite for the scriptures, O God. An appetite for the Bible. Restore to me the desire to study the scriptures, to study the Bible, to study the Bible. Give me, Father, this desire. Give me the desire. 
Give me the desire, oh God, to continue learning from the scriptures. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Bwana ne enanami Sauti yako Bwana ni sikie Ne enanami Bwana ne enanami Sauti yako Bwana ni isikie upon you counselors teachers advisors who will advise you in the ways of God and in every stage and level of your life may God position the right people for you and today by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I remove from your life evil teachers a device are sent by the devil I command them to lose your location never locate you never identify you agents of darkness who are sent to arrest you and mislead you I decree and declare they shall not locate your life they shall not locate your life they shall not locate your life. I hide you under the feathers of God. I hide you in the blood of Jesus. I hide you in the perfidion of our Father. Where evil teachers, advisors, will not locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. And in every department of your life, in every desire, may the Lord bring people to help you. When you come to the end, may the Lord provide people in the name of Jesus. I now bless you with good counselors and advisors. And I release upon you the spirit to love the counsel of God. That when God speaks, you shall not harden your heart. You shall not reject the godly counsel. May the Lord give you the willingness to receive 
the preachings. To receive the counsel from the Bible. To receive the counsel from your spiritual leaders. Who have a good intention for your life. May the Lord give you humility to accept that counsel. In Jesus name I pray. Say amen. amen. Clap your hands to Jesus. There is something more I want to say. May the Lord give you a discerning heart. To know and to be able to identify the voice of God in the midst of a lot of noise. That somebody can speak to you who is not even born again, but you are able to hear if it is God speaking to you. Listen, God can speak to you even through non believers. I told people a story in the morning. Listen, I told people a story in the morning that uh, one man was driving and he had a puncture of his car outside a mental hospital. The hospital for mad people. So he stops to change the tire. And then in the process of changing his tire, the nuts, the screw, fall into a ditch, the four of them. And they could not reach them. So he got stranded. You know, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do? How do I get out of this place? Then a madman in the mental hospital was watching and told that man, Hello, I can see you are stuck. Get one nut from the other three wheels and tie this one. Then once you get to a place you can buy others, buy and replace. Then this normal person outside a mental hospital asked that man, you are too wise. How comes you are in a mental hospital? He told him, Mommy, I'm in a mental hospital, but I'm not foolish. I can be a madman, but I'm not foolish. My daughter, she was just nine years old. We wanted electricity at home. So I'd made application to the Kenya Power, given me a quotation. The quotation expired. I did, I renewed the application. It expired again. Then one day my daughter at nine years told me, Daddy, by then we did not have electricity in the church. He told me, Daddy, go and fix electricity in the church first before ours. I took those papers and dumped them in the wall unit. I didn't touch them. I came here, we made application for power. We were given a quotation a huge quotation. We appealed. They gave us the right quotation. We paid. And the power was disconnected. Oh, sorry, was connected to the church. We got connected. After we fixed the power in the church, one lady came to me and told me, God has spoken to me to fix power in your house. She asked me, have you ever made application? I told her, yes. Then she told me, wait, I'm going to give you all the money because God has spoken to me to pay for you. Brothers and sisters, one day that lady called me. We went to the bank. She withdrew 33,000 Kenya shillings. Then escorted me to the door of Kenya Power in town. Told me now you can get in and pay for your electricity. I paid 32,800, came out of the Kenya Power offices with only 200 shillings, came back home because I heard the voice of my young daughter. God made 
my need. God met my need. He paid for my power because I was able to listen. Many of you are stuck because you don't listen. Today God has brought you a redemption. Leo Mungu amekuletea ukombozi. Wakati mwingine unafikiria ni mapepo unapigana nayo ni kwa sababu usiki yangi. Leo Mungu amekukomboa na maisha yako yanachukua speed ingine ya ajabu katika jina la Yesu. Pokea hiyo speed katika jina la Yesu. Nasema pokea hiyo speed katika jina la Yesu. You shall see God in a way you have never seen him in Jesus mighty name. Give him a clap offering this morning. You are watching me today. You are not born again. You need to give your life to Jesus. For you to be able to hear and to discern what the Lord is saying to you, you need the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God dwells in the sons of God. Today, give your life to Jesus. Connect yourself, number one, with the heavenly council. And God will parade there are three counselors that you need in your life. Make this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I've received your word. I've received your word. I make a choice today. I make a choice today to connect myself to connect myself with the heavenly council. With the heavenly council. Therefore now, therefore now, I ask you. You to forgive my sins, to forgive my sins and, cleanse my life and cleanse my life from all iniquity. From all iniquity. I, receive you into my heart I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior. As Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands to Jesus. Now take a step. You have made that prayer. Now take a step and write to us. Write to us. Write on that page and tell us, I have given my life to Jesus. I have done, I've made this decision today. Give us also your contact so that we can come to you, be able to lead you to a place where you can be nurtured spiritually in the name of Jesus Christ. And just before we let you go, we bring you and oh, we give you an opportunity to give an offering. We give you an opportunity to give your tithe, to give your offering, to give you a sacrifice, to support this ministry that has blessed your life. Our baby is on the screen. 340754. Account number is your name. Get that pay bill and give your offering. Give your tithe. Support God. The moment you support his work, you cannot grow relevant in your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. 340-754, account number your name. And until Wednesday, the Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. We love you. And we declare you shall be productive even to the old age in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate our viewers as we let them go.
Baba ni tiengu 